It's hard to find new ways to love your neighbor, to engage with your neighbor when your neighbor wants you to pass by on the other side six feet away. Behold, a lawyer stood up to put Jesus to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But he, desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and he fell among robbers and they stripped him and beat him and they departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a, Levi, or a, a Levite, when he came to the place, saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, the good Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was and when he saw him, he had compassion. He went to him bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine, and he set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, uh, and took care of him. And next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, "What care? Uh, take care of him, whatever more you spend, I will repay when I come back. Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said, you go and do likewise. Love your neighbor. It's hard to find new ways to love your neighbor. It's the second greatest command from Jesus, love your neighbor, Luke 10, verse 27. It's the second most popular thing to talk about right now in Christian online videos when it comes to this pandemic. If you love your neighbor, then you'll do this. If you love your neighbor, then you'll practice this. If you love your neighbor, you're going to wash your hands. You'll stay away from public places. You're going to stay at home if you love your neighbor. If you love your neighbor, you'll stay away from them, which is odd and ironic to even say. It's hard to find new ways to love your neighbor in this time when you're used to doing it the old face-to-face, up-close-and-personal way, the pre-coronavirus way. I found out that if you're close enough to open a door for someone right now, you're too close to them. I never thought chivalry would be 100% dead, but it is right now if that chivalry is six feet or closer. It's the weirdest thing to open a door for someone and literally have them stare at you like you're an alien from another planet and wait for you to go in first or back away from the handle at a safe distance. I found out that people will look at you like you're a serial killer if you pick up something they have dropped in Walmart and try to hand it back to them. There was an elderly woman coming out of a grocery store, having trouble with her cart. And if there was any other time, any other time, I would have gone over to help her unload her groceries or at least take the cart that she had been pushing to the collection stations in the parking lot so she didn't have to walk over there. But I just walked by because I knew I would be within six feet of her and I didn't want grandma to go off on me. There are times where it feels like good deeds, which were good deeds just a few weeks ago are now seen as culturally taboo because of social distancing guidelines and acceptable six feet spaces between us. That's a hard thing for me to digest, that good deeds which were good just a few weeks ago are now bad. That the greatest ways to show love and compassion are now labeled as dangerous and almost immoral. It's hard to find new ways to love your neighbor, especially when you're used to handshakes and giving hugs and smacking each other on the arm. It's not impossible. It's just hard. Just imagine if it was Christmas right now and this virus is going around and all the presents and gifts that you had bought and brought for your family had to be brought in unwrapped and pre-sanitized or it's Thanksgiving and all the casseroles and turkeys that have to be prepared, you know, in freshly uh, Lysoled and Clorox kitchens and each person in your family get together has to eat at least six feet away from each other at your grandmother's house or not even have get togethers at all. It wouldn't be impossible for your family to get together. It would just be really hard. It's not impossible to show love for your neighbor right now. It's just hard for me to find new ways when your neighbor doesn't want you around. And it's hard for me to understand what's going on. I don't live in a big city. I work on a farm most of the time. Physical church services have been called off. All these restrictions have been put into place. 
But I still see my immediate family and friends. I work with them. I eat lunch with them. Usually not over 10 people at a time. We still sit on front porches and, and shoot the breeze at lunchtime. We watch our kids play in the creek or fish or ride their bikes or their four-wheelers. My kids were homeschooled before all this happened, so it's hard for me to empathize with what's going on in highly populated areas. When I hear about the things that are happening in New York or New Orleans where thousands upon thousands of people are getting sick, cities have come to a standstill or a lockdown, it seems so far away from country life, from fields and five-acre yards and places where your neighbors can't see what you're doing when you walk out the door because they're that far away. I don't understand it because I don't live there. I'm not on the front lines like our healthcare workers and our first responses, which we need to pray for. This whole world has been put into a blender and turned topsy-turvy upside down when good deeds and good things that we knew as good before aren't good to do anymore. And it's hard to find new ways to love your neighbor when your neighbor doesn't want you around or even in close proximity, when your neighbor doesn't want you to help them. This last week, my wife and kids were in the living room and I thought they were just coloring, you know, drawing pictures on on the table. But what they were doing was writing letters to everyone that they could think of who needed a little bit of encouragement, people who were home by themselves, people who were sick at church, people who just had babies, whoever it was, they were writing cards And my kids are coloring them and sending them to our neighbors. It's hard to find new ways to love your neighbor when your neighbor has a six-foot invisible quarantine wall around them and they have sniper-like eyes watching for you to change direction when you come within their boundary. It's very hard, but it's not impossible. There are different non-invasive ways that we're learning as we go along. But there is something that I'm afraid of, a pattern I'm beginning to see in my own life. And what I fear more than anything is the temptation I see in myself or the reaction that I've seen in other people when it comes to me. That it's okay just to shut everyone out of my life altogether. To get into my little corner of the world and not care about anyone else. And I can just dismiss all the other people in the world, all the other people at Walmart, all the other people at Dollar General, all the other people that aren't directly attached to my life, that I can ignore other people altogether and not stop to see if they're in need. And it's the biggest temptation right now to pass by on the other side because that's what the world is telling you to do. I just turn on my spiritual turn signal and get into the passing lane and there's someone who stopped on the side of the road who needs my help. And I'm not like the Good Samaritan who stops and helps. And I'm acting like the priest. And because the government has told me to be a priest or a Levite, and everyone else is being a priest and a Levite, then it's okay for me to pass by on the other side too. That if I was from Kentucky and I was on the Kentucky-Tennessee border and you needed help in Tennessee, oh, I can't help you because you live in Tennessee. And if I go over there... I'm going to have to self-quarantine for the next 14 days when I get back home, so I can't help you. And this, this is what hit me. I would have never, before this coronavirus, never thought twice about helping that little old lady in the parking lot. But I passed her by. It's gotten to the point where a good neighbor to the world is one who passes by on the other side, six feet away. It has gotten to the point where a good neighbor is a person who refuses to be around other people, refuses to leave their house, refuses to interact with others, except at a safe distance. It's gotten to the point where we show love to others, as far as the world is concerned, by keeping as far away from them as possible. No matter what circumstance or environment of life we are in, it bothers me when the Good Samaritan is no longer the hero of the story of the Good Samaritan, but the priest and the Levite are. Think about it.